Hey, and welcome to Let's Talk, a podcast from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network, where we seek to apply biblical wisdom to everyday life. My name is Jackie Hill Perry, and I am here uh, with Melissa Kruger and Jasmine Holmes. Today, we're going to talk about something a little theological, but it's a topic that also makes a practical difference in our lives, and that is the holiness. That's how you have to say it, Melissa. <laughs> holiness. <laughs> you hear the holiness of God. What, what, what words come to mind when you think of holiness perfection immediately okay mm. fear fear mm -hmm. shame in the face of holiness honestly i think my first thought isn't a, a word but a memory and it's growing up in or going to a, a missionary baptist church where everybody wore really long dresses stockings um super modest didn't have nail polish would not play cards gamble listen to secular music just that whole environment mm -hmm. is what i mm -hmm. thought holiness was which i think begs the question is like how do you think holiness is often misunderstood yeah well, let's define it. One of us is writing a book about holiness. Ooh, it's not me. It's not me. <laughs> How would you define holiness, Jackie? <laughs> Well, I think the best way to define it is to define how God is holy, mm. you know, because we base our or should um, we should walk out holiness in the way that God himself is holy. Basically, one of the words that frames holiness is to be set apart, to be different, to be unique and different as in different from the world, different from that which is unlike God. God himself is holy. One of the interesting things, though, as I've been studying holiness is how like I think a, a lot of times when people think about the holiness of God they only think about it in terms of moral perfection mm -hmm. when it's not limited to that um, God's holiness is that he is morally perfect he cannot sin will not sin does not delight in sin but it's also that he's transcendent meaning he is the I am he is different and distinct and unique from everything he has ever made and mm -hmm. so in holiness it isn't just he doesn't sin but it's also he is not like us hmm. you know so even when we're heavenly and then perfect. When we're made perfect, he will still be different. Completely. Than us. In every way. Yeah. Because he doesn't exist like us. Yeah. We every don't become all knowing or all you know, sovereign. Yeah. I mean, those are reserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like, I hadn't thought about it that way before. It makes holiness much uh -huh. wider. Yeah. That's it does. Good. I think uh, than we've thought about it. And so with that, that's one way holiness is misunderstood mm -hmm. is not seeing how God being holy also is connected to God being different, you know, um, because I think some some people they don't even like this conversation because they think holy so they think wrath right mm -hmm. hatred anger mm -hmm. <laughs> hell but it's like nah because he's transcended it also means he exists differently and because he exists differently it means he can answer all of your prayers in a way that no one on earth ever could because he sees you mm -hmm. at all times mm -hmm. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. he can act whenever he wants. He knows what's going to happen. So you can actually pray for future events. Like nobody can do that. Yeah. Because nobody's him. So that's the definition. Set apart, different, unique, distinct, other, higher. Yes. Hmm. That's good. I picture that um, throne room scene in Isaiah 6. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it says, in the year King Uzziah died, mm -hmm. I saw the Lord seated upon his throne. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the robe filling the temple. And it's this picture of the grandeur and holiness of God. And Isaiah says, his response is, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Like whoa, saved by yeah. the bell. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Woe is to me. For yeah. I'm a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. And I do think there is this, oh, there's an amazing awe at the difference mm -hmm. of God. But do you think there can be a fear? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can fear difference Absolutely. sometimes just because God is so different from us and we are so not like him mm -hmm. that we understand this gap, mm -hmm. you know, and it can cause us to fear. So mm -hmm. how, how do we live? Live with this knowledge that God is holy and righteous and all good and all knowing and perfect and lovely and beautiful in all his ways. And we are not. Yeah. Like what does that, what should our response to God's holiness yeah. be? Yeah. What should it be, Jasmine? I have so many responses I come to mind, but I think the one that is fighting to be said first, and I'm not sure why, is obedience. But I think that something should precede the obedience 
Because for me, I think my response to God's holiness is not to behold him, but to immediately look back at myself mm. and compare and be like, ooh, mm. I got to get this together because mm-hmm. he's really holy and I got to like, I need to get, get better so that he can behold me instead of God just basking in his holiness like yeah. taking a moment to really behold and trust and love and revere and for obedience repentance faith and obedience to follow i think my initial thought is obedience do what he says yeah <laughs> because i think it's hard to conceptualize how to delight in mm-hmm. his obedience um which perhaps is another misunderstanding of it mm-hmm. you know because it, that, that always makes me think about uh, genesis 3 and how after adam and eve sinned they ran or not ran but hid from god mm-hmm. you know um god was holy and so is there a real fear that like when he come on the scene because we just listened to this dang old snake that he's <laughs> <laughs> right like we about to die today but actually his holiness means that you can come near to him and should come near to him Mm -hmm. um, for forgiveness because he's the only one that can give it. Another product of his uniqueness is that he's the only one able to offer forgiveness for our sins. And so that's the weird And there was no place to hide. There was the... No. He sees everything. We're going to hide. He's He's going to put some fig leaves over there. Everywhere. (laughs) Just make it real This tree will keep me from your wrath. Uh That's for sure. I've been thinking a lot about the difference between shame and godly guilt which I think 2 Corinthians talks about how godly guilt leads us to repentance Mm -hmm. and worldly guilt it just basically leads us to hide and so Adam and Eve weren't experiencing like guilt over sin they were experiencing like shame Mm. I want to hide I want to go away whereas honest guilt leads us to repentance and to like lay ourselves bare before God in Mm. all of his holiness knowing that he is good Mm -hmm. shame does not trust that God is it trusts that our we're good Mm. we can be good we can earn good and goodness and so I've just been really convicted lately of how often I've substituted shame and pride for true repentance and true guilt over sin and true beholding of God's holiness and goodness. Mm-hmm. I think one thing we try to do in that, if we we sometimes take the other route and we try to make God more like us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's not really that holy. Mm-hmm. So true. therefore I'm not mm-hmm. really that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is basically what the Greek gods, you know, zoo, I mean, yeah. they all act like really bad humans. Yeah. And that was more comfortable. So I think one way we try to deal with God's holiness is rather than seek atonement mm-hmm. for ourselves or mm-hmm. seek, you know, I mean, think, I think of Isaiah with that coal mm-hmm. that comes and yeah. he's like, your sin is atoned for, your yeah. guilt is relieved. We seek to make God lesser so that we can be more like him, which mm-hmm. is basically what Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. I mean, they were trying to be like God. Right. Yeah. And so if God, you know, he's a little more human, mm-hmm. then I'm not so far off the mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we lessen rather than say, oh my goodness you're so different from me you're so beautiful you're so glorious and yeah there should be a moment of woe Mm -hmm. yeah but then what christ did for us on the cross saving us redeeming us and then making us holy yeah will never be significant yeah if i don't understand how different he is than me and the wild thing is because i think that's a part of idolatry is making a god in your own image or exalting a created thing as if it is god and And truth be told, you don't really want a God that is like you. Yes, you want a God that's personal. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want a God that's intimate, therefore can hear, can speak, can relate in a a sense. But you don't want a God who is limited in the way that you are. Yet at the same time, we do it all the time. We live in a society that continues to frame and shape God around its own cultural ideas, which means you have a God that's always changing. Mm -hmm. He's always becoming like what whatever decade you live in when he just doesn't he doesn't exist like that right. like we I, I want a god who is not mutable like me so that i can like actually stand on something that's solid for mm-hmm. eternity mm-hmm. you know i've been reading the bible through an year and got past leviticus <laughs> did you and i enjoyed it it was weird. invisible confetti it was my first time reading it and i was like I, not my first time reading it my first time reading it where i wasn't just like okay all leviticus right. is then, bomb though with this it, 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 it is. is a bomb book. I didn't I did not realize it, but it is. And 
reading Leviticus, God is so holy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Like the, uh-huh. thi- the things that the Israelites had to do in order to be close to God, like the, the illustrations over and over again of the things that man had to do in order to be right with close to God, like walk with God. It's just, I always, would, I always wanted to like rush through Leviticus and be like, we get it, we get it, we get it. The law was really bad. So then Jesus Unclean. had to come and fix Unclean. it. Because mm-hmm. that Unclean. stuff was really hard. There was like the chap, the one about, and I was reading on, um, I, I listened on the Dwell Bible app, which really helps me because I am a, um, just one of those like really researchy, super fast reading, nerdy people mm-hmm. who's like, we know, races through things without considering them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I did it. Check it off. But Dwell forces me to listen dwell. and dwell because mm-hmm. my prideful self is like, I get it. I get it. And I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. So listening to Leviticus for the first time, I was like, okay, all right, pride. I see you <laughs> dying a slow and painful death. But I heard heard so much more about the ways that God was illustrating over and over again his holiness Mm -hmm. and our humanness and I guess before I had read Leviticus this time I was always like yeah Leviticus was just showing how bad the law was and then when Jesus came we could see how good he was Mm. because the law was really terrible but I I was able to see so much more illustration of God's goodness to provide a way and to provide deep illustration and rich illustration the more you understand the law given in Leviticus the more beautiful the parallels throughout the Bible the come and I saw in just this one slow reading, I saw a, a different perspective than, than what I'd never mm. seen before. And you see the graciousness of God. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm going to set up this whole system, this whole sacrificial system, so that when my son comes, you don't miss it. Yeah. Come you know, on here, Melissa. Yeah. You know, yeah. This beautiful thing that's yeah. painful that you do year after year after year, and there's all this bloodshed. And one day, my son's going to be that sacrificial lamb. You'll see it. And you'll see you'll it. get it. Yeah. Yeah. And just the removal, I mean, Roman talks about the removal of Mm. condemnation and the removal of shame because in Leviticus is like shame is really real in Leviticus go outside the camp you are not holy again until sundown Mm. like you touched a dead body you ate something you weren't supposed to eat you had weird discharge you you need to go you got leprosy like I mean just like I felt like it was like man god like you wow like our humanness is problematic (laughs) that's a really good point we tend to think of our sin being problematic but no this body of flesh Yes. Mm-hmm. That we've inherited from Adam. The thing that Adam brought into the world. Is now problematic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because it's dying. Yeah. It's dying. It gets sick. It yeah. gets, and that is not holy. Yeah. That is not divine. That is hu- very human. Mm-hmm. And so seeing that was so helpful. And then even realizing that just through the gospel, all of that shame is removed because Christ took it all on for us on the cross. Understanding Leviticus means understanding a fraction of what Christ endured for us on the cross. Hmm. Because he took all of that shame and condemnation upon himself Hmm. so that we wouldn't have to carry it anymore. And so it's not like, oh, he took the law and it was really bad and it was awful. No, he took all the reasons why we needed the law and answered them all. And now can say, we can say the law is actually good. Yes, Because it's a reflection of the word become flesh who dwelt among us. Hmm. And so now that I'm no longer forced to live up to the standard, I can see it as him saying, no, 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 this is the path of blessing. Mm -hmm. Like meaning not that your life is going to go perfect and you're going to get all the things of this world Mm -hmm. because you obey God, but your soul will prosper Mm -hmm. by following God's law because it's the owner's manual, so to speak. Like this is how we're created to live is in light of his law, but it's different than trying to obey it so that we will be holy. Yeah. But because we're being made holy, we see it as the beautiful, better way. Mm -hmm. It's a totally Absolutely. different form yeah, because, of obedience because the law was given after israel was rescued mm-hmm. which is i think a great picture of we're not we're saved by grace through faith and out of that salvation our living out or working out our salvation with fear and trembling is okay how do i respond to what jesus has done right. for me i love him back <laughs> how do i love him by the power of the spirit mm-hmm. I, it doesn't matter how holy i try to be which i should pursue it without holiness no one will see the lord Absolutely. but i have to know that even in my effort 
efforts of trying to live a holy life, this does not, one, change God's love for me, nor does it force God's hand to save me. Mm -hmm. You know, he saved me on his own accord. Yeah. You know, but one of the, uh, I think, encouraging things about holiness, even in its connection to salvation, is how, like, in Isaiah 55, we often quote, you know, his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. But a few verses before that, it actually talks about how God is the one who pardons workers of iniquity. Then he moves to say, my thoughts are not like yours. Yeah. My ways are not like yours. And so even his pardon of sinners is a response or uh, like his transcendent nature in action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and so it's like, man, I'm so glad you don't think like me because the way I think <laughs> is vengeful. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, good. the way I think is not gracious <laughs> or good at all. But the way you think only you could come up with a plan to say, you know what? They broke my law. They broke my standard, but I'm gonna love them and I'm gonna save them anyway. Yeah. Only God could yeah. think of something like that. That's why grace is like not a thing that you see in other religions. Yeah. Yeah. I think because the only true Yahweh God, I think it's a product of him, not man. Absolutely. It's actually, it shows the difference of Christianity. Yeah. Meaning all other religions look a lot like humans. Yes. Work to yeah, receive. That's a mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's almost that this does not make sense shows his ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts mm -hmm. who has a dying savior oh my goodness you know who who does this i mean as c.s lewis said we only have one god who would become man mm -hmm. everybody else is men who want to be gods mm -hmm. you know and yet here we have god condescending making taking on human flesh mm -hmm. becoming like man mm -hmm. in order to save us strange you know, it's yeah it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and so in some ways it proves the point yeah yeah that's i like that good I jackie love, i love it i know i like I you know. i like i can't wait to read this book <laughs> it's gonna be so good <laughs> That's why holiness is good news, yes. guys. How can his holiness impact one's proclivity towards legalism? Asking for a friend. <laughs> The friend is me. Jasmine, I'm the friend. You know, I think because the reality, when we really try to be holy, we fall flat on our face mm -hmm. over and over again. And I think if we do not stop believing in our own righteousness, God will be faithful to show us that our own righteousness gets us nowhere and mm -hmm. he will squash it, you know, by our continual failure. And I, I actually don't think it's a bad thing to try really hard. Through trying really hard, I've seen a greater understanding of my weakness and my dependence upon the gospel. That's true. Mm -hmm. And so when I say that, it's it's been by falling flat on my face yeah. and realizing oh, I'm going to need grace every single day of my life and I don't want to. Mm. I want to graduate. Yeah. I want to graduate from the school. Mm -hmm. I want to be holy. And he's like, I will not let you be holy outside of me. Mm. So I think the hope is that God is kind to the legalist. Yeah. And he pursues us even in our legalism and mm -hmm. our desire to be righteous in ourselves and be better than yeah. others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, yep, I still love even you. And I'm going to pull you out of that. I'm, using, I'm actually using that thing. And he's using it, mm -hmm. you know. To show and, my holiness. Again. And so he he shows us and he's like, no, only through me. And so slowly, rather than we we can learn to love holiness and even become more holy. Mm -hmm. And yet, because we know it's so all him, we're actually humble in it. Mm. Whereas before we could have only been prideful in it. Mm. You know, but because of all my falling on my face, I'm like, oh, if there's anything good in me, it's clearly from him. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and that that's so hopeful to mm. me that like his holiness is also kindness and he he bears patiently with my slowness. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that for even the legalist or for the licentious. Mm -hmm. He's going after us both. Yep. So with the licentious, that's a good point. I, I think he's gonna come after them and they're gonna see that sin does not yield good fruit. What what do you you think might be misinterpreted or just not believed about the person and the holiness of God that leads people to licentiousness? Maybe going, maybe depending on the swings. Mm -hmm. um, one way that I can think of is I know a lot of people, grew up with a lot of people who were believers there, you know, grew up in Christian homes, believers their entire lives. And for whatever reason, maybe they got hurt by the church. Maybe they just got tired. They were like, this whole like following the law thing doesn't produce the kind of things that I want. Yeah. I'm way happier when I'm not trying to obey God's strict standard. Mm. He loves me anyway. Yeah. It's fine. And it's one of those things as I have as an adult 
realized how much I struggle with shame and how much shame is not of the gospel and not of the Lord. I want to get rid of that shame, but I don't want to get rid of awareness of sin Hmm. or guilt over sin. And sometimes I don't think that people understand the difference between those two things. They want a life rid of all bad feeling. Mm -hmm. And so anything that makes them feel bad or guilty or um, unworthy, Mm -hmm. they do away with. Because God's answer for the legalist and the licentious one is the same. It's to hold up the mirror. The mirror of his holiness works for both of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the legalist, it's like, this is me. Mm -hmm. You can't get here by yourself. Mm -hmm. You can keep trying or you can realize that my burden is light. Mm. And for the licentious, it's like, this is me. You're way over there. (laughs) Come on. Yeah. Bring it back. Um, And I'm sure there's lots of different reasons why people fall into, you know, that antinomian licentious category, but I've definitely seen hurt people do it a lot. Yeah, I'd agree. I think, especially if you grew up in like a Christian context where you were trying to be good, Mm -hmm. that that is exhausting, you know, to try to be something that you're inherently not. And it's, it's thankless. What you mean? I, I People told me, Jasmine, you're going to be, you're a virgin when you're getting married. Mm-hmm. You saved yourself for your husband. You're going to have just the best ever marriage ever because you're just, you look at you. Which is a prosperity gospel. It is. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I just, when I was single, my goodness, everybody all the time, I want to look back at the adults in my life and be like, oh, God set me up. <laughs> But I just was told, you know, because you're you're such a good, you obey, you do everything right. And, you know, six months into my marriage, I had had a miscarriage. Mm. My family was moving across the sea. I was moving to a different place. I didn't really know the person that I got married to. Mm. It was it was thankless mm. because I was doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. I wasn't doing it to bring glory to God and mm-hmm. to honor him. I was doing it because it made me look and feel good and felt like the safest decision to make. Because mm. if the expectation is by living a good life and... And, you know, being this morally acceptable person means that I'll have an easy life. Mm-hmm. Then when the ease is not there and suffering is present, you feel like God failed you. Right. Mm-hmm. That he's not to be trusted yep. and that there's no point in being holy. Yep. When the holiest being that has ever existed <laughs> died on a cross and was murdered by his own. And so I don't know how we could expect <laughs> that living a holy and righteous life will turn out to mean having a prosperous life in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, stuff. But I think think we need to reframe our understanding of God and see if I'm doing this unto God out of love for God then in my pursuit of holiness it don't matter if I never get anything I got him Mm -hmm. and so getting more of him actually makes life worth living doesn't mean it won't be hard everybody in the Bible that was faithful had hard lives Mm -hmm. but I think they had joyful lives absolutely what does it say in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand yeah Yeah. pleasures forevermore (laughs) that's my favorite well so let me ask you this question you said a phrase in there about pursuing holiness okay how can we actively pursue holiness we 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 obviously believe it's imputed to us Mm -hmm. and by imputed i mean it's fully given to us in christ but there's also at the same time this pursuit of holiness so we're declared holy by god Mm -hmm. in sanctif in salvation Mm -hmm. but then in sanctification we're pursuing holiness so how do we how do we seek to become more holy yeah one of my favorite passages is um first corinthians 7 where it talks about us being given the mind of christ is i come back to it all the time i probably talked about it last last season too it's my favorite because i thought of it when i read it it's actually i just read it i was like this was jasmine's first it's my favorite i love it because it just it so takes everything off of jasmine and her mind and her works and her way of figuring things out and puts everything onto like your entire your mind and being is being renewed and so it's not as though god says you know be holy jump across this chasm like get as close as you can you may fall <laughs> he provides the way and transforms and changes and just brings us near and so i think the first step is understanding that it's a work of him and his mm. spirit that the god has intimately involved in which is mm. be, like he's bringing us in that's mm. so beautiful mm-hmm. um and takes so much pressure off of us thinking that our obedience is what makes him love us like jackie said we were already rescued Mm -hmm. and then god's like all right you're rescued you're mine this is how we're going to walk because i'm holy Mm -hmm. to be mine you you, you're holy Mm -hmm. i've already said it Mm -hmm. i've already established
touched it now walk in it and then he gives us everything we need to walk in it which is just great yeah yeah I, th- I think it's as simple as let me look at jesus and god's revelation of himself throughout the scriptures and see how i can follow him in that you know so god is love let me love my neighbor who is my neighbor anybody that breathes <laughs> You know, identifying the things in me that don't want to love my neighbor or why I don't want to love my neighbor. They get on my nerves. I don't like them. Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13 and and see how to apply. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love hopes the best. Love uh, does not keep a record of wrong. That's one way for me to honor God in being holy is by being loving. What is in my life that is keeping me from living like God? Some of those things aren't necessarily sinful things but they're unhelpful. Mm -hmm. So is it social media? Mm -hmm. Let me lay aside that way. Why? Maybe that frees me up to pray more. Maybe that frees me up from being discontent. Maybe that frees me up to not have anxieties. Or if I do have anxieties, let me give my anxieties to God instead of putting them on myself. That's another way to be holy because now I'm trusting God to be God for me and not trusting in myself Mm -hmm. to handle all the things that God may have given me to steward. So I, I think just looking at the Bible and saying, I want to be like Jesus, but also recognizing like, Jasmine said, I cannot be like Jesus apart from the Trinity. Mm -hmm. I need the Spirit of God to empower me to be like Himself, Mm -hmm. you know? And as long as I try to do it in my own strength and power, I will always end up in the flesh. That's good. I like how you brought in the Trinity. It's like the Spirit is in us, Mm -hmm. empowering us. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hello. In us, empowers us to live as God would intend. Mm -hmm. Jesus reveals Mm -hmm. what God the Father's like. Mm -hmm. And then God the Father made a way. Mm-hmm. through Jesus mm-hmm. for us to actually be holy. Yeah. You know, but it takes we need a threefold trinity. Yeah. We do. <laughs> trinity is really important. Yes. I mean, Very. You know, it's, yes. It's it, and it and it proves it's like at every direction it's him yep. making us holy. Yeah. But I think it really is it, it is so important to have time in his presence. Mm. I don't know. I lived with the same roommate all four years in college and by like our senior year people would get our names mixed up. You know, our hair started looking the same we wore the same clothes mm. like about 10 years later we came to a party dressed in like the same outfit <laughs> you know it was like time together mm-hmm. makes you look like each other yeah and and i always think about that with jesus mm-hmm. if i want to look more like jesus i have to spend time with him yeah. or else i will continually make him in my own image yep. yeah i'll be like this is how melissa would love that yeah. person so i don't want to hard love people mm-hmm. yeah i don't want to ever call out sin mm-hmm. or do anything you know mm-hmm. whereas jesus did all of that you know i mean he did hard he did hard love and i would just love like oh that's being nice to people because that feels good so he starts redefining when i look at him and his word what holiness is even is yeah Otherwise, it would just be Melissa's version of holiness. One thing in my life that's happening now, because as I've been writing this book, one of my prayers is that God would make me more holy. Because I just, I know it's easier for me to read and study it and communicate it than it is to actually live it out. And so as I've prayed that, it's been funny that, of course, he's answered it. But he hasn't answered the prayer for me to be more holy in these super dramatic ways. It's been really small stuff. For example, I'll be vague about it. But a situation happened where I need to apologize first and I didn't want to I was like I just I don't want to I don't I don't feel like I know I should but I just would rather them come to me and it's like yeah but you serve a God who did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself and became a servant and so in following him in holiness means that sometimes you need to lay down your rights Mm -hmm. and apologize first Mm -hmm. and I'm like I thought when I asked you to make (laughs) me holy you know I I just be able to walk out like Moses and have like my face shining (laughs) without any work (laughs) i didn't think it would be these small acts of humility Uh that Uh you were placing in my life to actually make me holier Mm -hmm. so that's the funny thing about praying even for god to make you holier is that he'll do it in very small and uncomfortable yet equally challenging ways that are frustrating but good i've also noticed that consistently being in the word has helped me in my quest for holiness. I shared um, on a previous episode, I tend to be a really like, whatever I'm feeling that day, you know? Like I wanna be in the Psalms today. (laughs) I wanna be in Proverbs today. But reading the Bible through in a year and seeing that God is, I'm a writer and an amateur historian. God is the best 
historian yes because he is unfolding history for his purposes and he's given us this entire story where no literary device is accidental no character is disposable like everybody and everything every jot and tittle is working together to show a picture of his holiness and his goodness mm-hmm. and reading the bible straight through has been one of the best illustrations of that for me um, illustrations of his holiness and illustrations of the fact that I need him. Mm. I need his word to convict and sharpen and draw me towards deeper and further holiness. Mm. It also shows, I mean, I think there's some really uncomfortable places in the Bible when you get into the Old Testament about God's holiness. Um, I remember the story of, is it Uzzah? Mm-hmm. Uh, Uzzah, is that right? How you say it? I think so. When he dropped the ark. Uh-huh. And, you know, he helps God out, so yep. to speak. Yep. Oh, I think about that one all the time. Yeah. And it's really uncomfortable because he's immediately yes. killed yeah. by the holiness of God. Because it kind of feels like, dang, I, don't know. I know. It's like he was trying to, yeah. he was just trying to pick it up. <laughs> and, and, and God's so holy. Mm-hmm. He's going to be worshipped how he'll be worshipped. Yes. I think of the sons of, um, was it the sons of Korah who worshipped incorrectly mm-hmm. in the Old Testament fire. and the fire mm-hmm. comes out mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. And, and I, I think we have to deal with there is an uncomfortable nature about the holiness of God, especially for our friends who aren't believers. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for me, it's the thing that really propels evangelism for me, um, is the reality that there's a holy God. Yeah. And if if we don't die in the Lord, we meet with his holiness. Yeah. And that's an uncomfortable thing. Yeah. So how, how does the holiness of God change how we look at the world? That's a great question. Yeah, because I mean, it's a fearful thing to to fall into the hands of the living God mm-hmm. and how even those evidences of God's what seems like spontaneous justice are seen in the New Testament. Ananias and Sapphira, they, they lie to the Holy yep. Spirit and they dropped it, you know, and we don't know how many times God might be doing that in our day and age, but we have some type of medical uh, prescription for why it happened, not yeah. knowing if there mm-hmm. was a justice it's situation at hand. But I think it definitely gives me an urgency and a zeal um, to just talk about Jesus and his goodness and his beauty because we don't have to be on the receiving end of wrath. Yeah. You, you know, God really has made a way of escape for us. But the reality is, is that there are so many people that are choosing it. I remember Tim Keller said something like that. Like everyone in hell has chosen to be there mm-hmm. because in their refusal to yeah. believe in Jesus, they have also said yes to the response that Jesus will have to their unbelief, which is scary. But I guess I see both sides which is I'm grateful that I have a just God Mm -hmm. you know Um, I think I would be I would find it troublesome if there was a God who had a law who said who demands that it be kept and says that there will be consequences to not keeping it and then when people break it he does nothing Mm -hmm. I wouldn't believe anything Mm -hmm. else he has to say and so I maybe you'll be the one that gets away with whatever (laughs) yeah it's just like you're passive then you're a liar you don't keep your word but you also Mm -hmm. overlook injustice in Mm -hmm. all of its forms and so i don't want to look at somebody who has been who has suffered oppression who has been raped who has been Mm -hmm. abused who has whose people have been murdered i think about people in the rwanda genocide Mm -hmm. i think about the holocaust i think about september 11th and for me to say god is so loving that he will overlook and never do anything about all of the sin that has that has been done in this world it's like no i want a god who's going to get the bullies off the playground Mm -hmm. i want a god who's going to handle the wrong Mm -hmm that the justice system cannot. Mm-hmm. So, And he says, I care so much about it. Yep. And yet at the same time, I care so much about you that I'm willing to send my son. To make yep. a way. When I think about the cross of Jesus, it makes me realize God is not, God doesn't look at sin and just say, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You're cute. <laughs> right. I love you. I'm just going to, I'm just going to not care. Yeah. He actually looks at us and says, I love you enough but it has to be paid for. Mm -hmm. Like sin has to be atoned for. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to put it all on my son. And now through his blood, I can basically kill all of your sin. Your sin died with him so you can live with me. But I think it allows us to say to the watching world, you know, people we know, we all know who have suffered abuse, Mm -hmm. who have suffered great, horrific things. And, you know, even as we read about things like the Holocaust, Mm -hmm. or I I read this book Jackie told me to read, which is excellent, called Machete Season, about the Rwandan genocide. And you read it, and your soul cries out for justice. Mm -hmm. And I can say, my God is just. 
yeah. he ca- he cares about this way more than I do. Yeah. And so it helps me hold those tensions that this world is so far from how it should be, mm-hmm. but that he cares way more mm-hmm. than I care. Yeah. And he's actually made a way yeah. that anyone, no matter what we've done, can come to him. That's mm-hmm. the gospel. Yeah. Okay. Enough about holiness. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> everything about holiness. But we want to go from there to talk about some of our favorite things. Uh, Melissa and Jasmine, I want to know, where in the world have you most clearly seen God's glory displayed in nature? In other words, what is the most beautiful place that you have ever been? And I know it's probably been a while because ain't nobody getting on planes. But God gave you a memory for a reason. One place I love that's really nearby that I can drive to, I don't have to fly to, so I can still go see it, um, is outside of Asheville, North Carolina. You have the Blue Ridge Parkway, Mm -hmm. and you get on it, and you drive, and it's just miles and miles of looking at mountains Mm -hmm. and the clouds come down into the mountains and it's just gorgeous mm. and so it's it's not far away it's not exotic mm. but it's just beautiful and i sit there and i look at it and i'm like god created all of this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's you know i'm sure there are so many more exotic places all over but that's the place i just love and there's beauty yeah, all over beautiful, yeah. yeah yeah there's beauty everywhere um the mediterranean oh we were in israel and it was like our first night we woke up the next morning and i was like oh like the water was just so it's so blue mm-hmm. i just was just sitting there like all of this amazing stuff happened in this country i'm walking in places that jesus walked and i'm seeing things that his disciples saw and this is amazing but that water though Mm -hmm. it was really really gorgeous have you been to israel not yet oh i want to go go. i haven't been either i want to go i want to go go. do a let's talk trip podcast trip that would be fire especially if tgc sponsors wink wink. who wants to go with us wink wink (laughs) (laughs) um i think I think one of the most beautiful places that I've been would e it would be between Durban or Cape Town, South Africa. Mm. Um, I think Cape Town is a lot more. Um, I don't know if industrializes or urban is probably the word, but they just it's just a pretty place. The sky, the the, the mountains, the people. It's just pretty. It's just not American in any way, you know. And I, th- I think some people who may not have visited Africa or researched it, they just have preconceived notions. about the continent and they think that the whole thing looks the same when it's like way bigger than America even America doesn't look the same when you move from state to state so how could the continent but anywho uh, it's just a it's a gorgeous place I I just can't Mm -hmm. I can't recommend it we're going in we're going this June are you yeah where are you going Um, Cape Town so we'll be going we're going there Mike's doing something I'm doing something we get to go together fancy I'll have to ask you where to go oh you know I got all the spots I can't wait okay saints thank Thanks for listening to this episode of Let's Talk. Next week, we'll be talking about fighting fear and anxiety. Don't get anxiety about us talking about fear and anxiety either. You can subscribe to Let's Talk through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you like to get your podcasts. Check out season one of Let's Talk along with other shows from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network at tgc.org forward slash podcast. The Gospel Coalition supports the church in making disciples of all nations by providing resources that are trusted and timely, winsome and wise, and centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. 